And now a commentary from Mumia Abu Jamal. Huey, a memory, 1942-1989. Huey P. Newton's name, and more importantly, his history of resistance and struggle, is little more than a mystery for many younger people in their 20s. The name and works of a third-rate rapper is more familiar to the average black youth, and that's hardly surprising given the failure of the public school system. For the public school system is invested in ignorance, and Huey P. Newton was a rebel, and more, a black revolutionary. Inspired by the civil rights movement and the violent attacks on blacks trying to vote, Huey felt a bolder, more radical stance was needed. At the age of 24, he co-founded the Black Panther Party, and the group expanded by leaps and bounds. Begun in October 1996, in three years it was located in over 40 chapters and branches across the country with an international section in Algiers, North Africa. Dedicated to the principles of black self-defense and black freedom, the party became the foremost radical group of the era with a wealth of supporters and enemies. Chief among enemies was the U.S. government, which, in the words of the FBI's chief, J. Edgar Hoover, considered it the greatest threat to national security. For many thousands of black youth, the rebelliousness of the party spoke to their spirits more truly than did the peaceful resistance represented by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. His Washington speech, known as the I Have a Dream speech, was neither his finest nor his most profound. But like many black preachers who are master orators, he brought his best to it. King, like many busy leaders, had others write some of his speeches, and one of those men was Vincent Harding, now a theologian and historian. Harding contributed to King's groundbreaking Riverside Church speech, delivered precisely a year before his assassination, where he denounced the Vietnam War, marking his break with an American president, Lyndon Bain Johnson, the corporate media, and many of his closest allies in the SCLC, or the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. President Johnson felt betrayed by King, and the media turned from praise to ridicule. In his book, Martin Luther King, The Inconvenient Hero, Harding quotes from the Washington Post, which editorialized that King, quote, had diminished his usefulness to his cause, to his country, and to his people, unquote, because of his speech against the Vietnam War. But betrayals didn't stop him nor did nasty editorials deter him. Indeed, the violence of war radicalized him deeply, so much so that he said later, the evils of capitalism are as real as the evils of militarism and evils of racism. Think of that. Capitalism, militarism, and racism. Evils. When's the last time you've heard that? Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was being radicalized by the churning events around him, and a year before his death, he was both anti-war and anti-capitalist. Ask yourself, if King were alive today, with his views, could he be elected president? If not, why not? What does that say about the nation's political system? From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio.